As you can see from any TV weather forecast, weather can change from hour to hour or day to day. But such changes occur within certain limits. Over time, from one season to another, or year after year, the weather forms patterns. Scientists recognize predictable weather patterns over a long period of time as a region's climate. Depending on where you are on Earth, you might experience wet tropical climates, dry desert climates, cold polar climates, temperate climates, or other climates. Climates typically change very slowly. Such change might take place over hundreds or even thousands of years. Yet, because of Earth's age, climates in any particular part of the world have changed many times. But how do scientists know where and when climates have changed? Let's explore the science of climate change in the real world. Everywhere on Earth, the climate is always changing. However, such changes take place gradually. This time scale is often too long for changes to be obvious during a human lifetime. For example, there was a time when the Antarctic continent was covered in lush vegetation. And yet now, the temperature there is so cold that it is covered in ice. In fact, Hundreds of millions of years ago, nearly the whole planet was covered in ice. At another time, areas of permanent ice on Earth almost disappeared. To understand these patterns, we must ask, what is climate change? And what causes it? People use the term climate change to describe broad-scale changes in global patterns of temperature, wind, precipitation, and the length of seasons. Climate change is not the same as global warming, which refers only to the Earth's increase in average temperature. Climatologists are scientists who look for and study evidence of past climate change in different places all over the world. For example, they can look at sedimentary rocks, because these rocks are formed by conditions on the Earth's surface, they contain clues to the kinds of environments that existed long ago. For example, sedimentary rocks can reveal that millions of years ago, an area was covered by a large lake, but today, the region is a flat, dry plain. Scientific evidence shows that certain patterns of the appearance and position of rocks could only form because of glaciers. When scientists find such rocks, even in a warm area, they know that glaciers, along with a very cold climate, once existed there. Climate is a major factor in determining where different species of animals and plants live. Relying on this fact, scientists use fossil animals and plants to learn about the temperature and precipitation of ancient climates. By compiling the research from different regions, scientists now have a record of Earth's climate going back thousands of years. It is clear from this research that Earth's climate is dynamic. We now understand that climate is always changing. We also know of many natural factors that affect climate change. One natural factor is volcanic activity. When volcanoes erupt, they can release vast quantities of dust and gases into the atmosphere. One of these gases is sulfur dioxide, which can cause acid rain. After an eruption, particles rise into the atmosphere. Within a few weeks, they spread around the planet. A large eruption can produce enough material to block up to 10% of the sun's energy. This loss of the sun's heat will cool the planet resulting in longer, harsher winters and shorter, colder summers. In this way, a single eruption can cause short-term climate change lasting several years. The sun is the atmosphere's sole source of heat and energy. Therefore, any change in solar output can impact Earth's climate. 
scientists monitor solar output changes by observing sunspots. As a rule, when the number of sunspots increases, more energy is delivered to our atmosphere, and that causes warmer temperatures. Like the cooling from an eruption, even a small increase in overall temperature can affect the length of seasons and the severity of weather. Another influence on Earth's weather is its position relative to the sun. It takes a year for Earth to go around the sun. During the year, Earth's weather depends on its tilt as it rotates. During summer, Earth is tilted toward the sun, receiving more sunlight. Similarly, Earth is tilted away from the sun during winter, leading to the colder temperatures of that season. Today, Data clearly shows that Earth has been experiencing a warming climate trend over the past century. Almost all climate scientists agree that the warming trend cannot be explained by natural factors alone. Most climate scientists are confident that human activity is causing the warming trend. This activity is primarily use of fossil fuels. Gases released from burning fossil fuels enter the atmosphere and cause climate change. In particular, we burn coal, oil, and gas to produce energy. This energy is vital to run factories, heat our homes and businesses, and operate our transport systems. A greenhouse is a building made of glass walls and a glass roof. It's a place where people grow flowers and vegetables. A greenhouse stays warm even in the winter because the glass allows sunlight in. Heat is unable to escape, keeping the plants, air, and other objects inside warm. Our atmosphere works a bit like a greenhouse. The gases in the atmosphere, like carbon dioxide and water vapor, absorb the sun's heat and trap warmth at the Earth's surface. During the day, the sun shines through Earth's atmosphere, heating Earth's surface. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere absorb heat, which would otherwise escape into space. In this way, the gases trap the heat so the atmosphere stays warmer than it would be. On average, Earth is a comfortable 59 degrees Fahrenheit. For life on Earth, the greenhouse effect is not a bad thing in and of itself. Without greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane, Earth's surface would be too cold to support complex life. However, because humans are overloading the atmosphere with greenhouse gases, Earth is now becoming warmer and warmer. What was once a stable, relatively constant global temperature keeps rising. Through thousands of studies over many decades, scientists have shown that temperature is increasing due to the greenhouse effect. Because the evidence strongly supports their theories, scientists are confident of the connection between burning fossil fuels and climate change. Their data supports mathematical models which show that the excess carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are causing temperatures to rise due to the greenhouse effect. What data do scientists collect to show changes in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere? As a first step, they directly measure the amount of greenhouse gases using a variety of instruments and satellite data. This data gives a snapshot of the atmosphere today. But how do researchers know about greenhouse gases in the past? The best way to study past atmosphere is to glean clues hidden deep in the ice of Greenland and Antarctica. The ice samples have air bubbles that reveal how much carbon dioxide existed thousands of years ago. They can sample this fossil air to measure just how much carbon dioxide existed in the past atmosphere. The scientists' most significant finding is that the atmosphere has more carbon dioxide now than at any other time over the past 650,000 years. And that amount continues to increase. Atmospheric data is speaking loud and clear. Earth's climate is definitely warming up. That means the temperature is rising and air is getting warmer. But how do these changes affect weather? What are the signs of climate change? Looking over decades or even centuries of data, 
Climatologists can see a variety of changes in rain and snow patterns. Such changes are predicted by climate models, given that warmer air causes more moisture to evaporate into the atmosphere. Added moisture in the air will typically result in more precipitation in the form of rain and snow. The physics of climate explains why the world is getting more precipitation than it did 100 years ago. But because of the complexity and size of weather patterns, this additional precipitation is not spread evenly around the world. Some places are getting less rain, while others are getting more than they received in the past. Even though overall precipitation has increased, higher surface temperatures have decreased the amount of water in some areas, less water means greater chances of drought in those areas that receive less rain. Another sign of climate change is more powerful weather. Higher temperatures warm the top layer of the ocean more than in the past. The greater warmth provides more heat energy that fuels hurricanes and tropical storms. We experience this weather as larger storms with stronger winds and heavier precipitation. Climate models also predict that warmer temperatures will reduce snowpack. Snowpack is the layers of snow that accumulate over time. Snowpack is found at altitudes where the temperature is cold enough for long periods of time. Today, the data shows reduced snowpack in places around the world, evidence that there is less snowfall and that snow is melting faster than it used to. Shrinking sea ice is another effect of climate change. One region where the effect is most evident is the Arctic Ocean. This area around the North Pole is so cold that a large region is covered with ice. During summer, some of this ice melts. However, with warmer air and water temperatures, sea ice in the Arctic Ocean is melting earlier and faster than usual. Given that Earth is warming, it's no surprise that scientists are documenting the disappearance of glaciers as well as sea ice. A glacier is like a huge river of dense ice and snow that slowly moves over land. Because of warmer temperatures, glacial ice is melting faster than new snow can accumulate. Soil and rock that is frozen all year long is called permafrost. Large areas of permafrost are found in Canada, Alaska, and other northern countries. As temperatures rise, so does the temperature of the ground, causing the permafrost to thaw. As permafrost melts, organisms in it decay. The decomposition releases methane, another greenhouse gas. Scientists are concerned that the methane will speed up climate change, leading to a so-called runaway global warming scenario. Scientific research provides compelling evidence that climate change is occurring at a rapid rate and that it is caused by human activity. These observations agree with computer models that scientists create using principles of physics and chemistry. The oceans cover about three quarters of our planet. For this reason, oceans have a strong influence on climate. One important fact about oceans is that they absorb most of the carbon in the atmosphere, However, seawater reacts with carbon to form carbonic acid. That's why higher levels of carbon are increasing the acidity of the Earth's oceans. Scientists have documented rising sea levels over the last century, a clear sign of climate change. How does climate change cause sea level rise? In addition to melting ice from glaciers and snowpack adding more water to the oceans, warmer water temperature causes water molecules to expand. The expanding water takes up more physical space, adding to sea level rise. Scientists' extensive painstaking research provides conclusive evidence to demonstrate that Earth's rapidly changing climate is a result of human activities, principally these are activities that release carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. There is no doubt that global climate change will affect people and the environment. It already has. 
global climate change is already impacting agriculture. Food crops need the right temperature and the right amount of water to grow and thrive. The change in climate impacts crop growth in positive and negative ways. Crops in a relatively cool region might grow faster with warmer temperatures. On the other hand, warm areas that become wetter and cooler may have shorter growing seasons and increase of plant diseases. Scientist models of global climate change predict droughts, and these are already worse than historical records show. Some crops can be difficult or impossible to grow during droughts, which reduce the amount of water available for irrigation. But when a drought ends, more powerful storms and more frequent flooding can easily ruin food crops. Climate change affects our energy needs. For example, higher temperatures will raise the demand for electricity to operate air conditioners. However, less energy may be needed to heat buildings in winter. Power generation can also be affected. Lower precipitation will reduce hydroelectric power production. Lower precipitation especially affects streams, rivers, and lakes. Less rain and snow reduces the availability of fresh water in many places around the world, a consequence that is often worse in places where there is the least water. Global climate change greatly impacts habitats and ecosystems. We are already seeing wetlands shrink, rainforests dry out, and deserts expand. These changes affect the plants and animals that live there. Some animals can migrate to find more suitable habitats. Plants have to adapt their life cycle to altered conditions. Forests are very sensitive to changes in climate. For example, higher temperatures and long droughts can lead to more wildfires, as well as fires that spread faster and burn longer. Towns and cities located near the coastline can be affected with more flooding and beach erosion. When you think about it, global climate change will affect all plants, animals, and human beings in many different ways. The effects are already being felt. The agreement of theory, models, and observations support scientist conclusions that humans are a factor in global climate change. Climate models predict that even if we stopped emission of all greenhouse gases today, gases already in the atmosphere will inevitably cause further climate change. For that reason, governments, industries, and individuals are making plans to adapt to the anticipated climate changes. But adaptation is only part of how humanity deals with climate change. The science shows that the single most important thing we must do is to reduce our use of fossil fuels that emit greenhouse gases. Technologies like solar panels, wind turbines, and electric cars are helping people to reach that goal. Anyone can also do their part by learning about climate change and its causes and making an effort to reduce their own greenhouse gas emissions. By doing these things, we can be hopeful that we will meet the greatest challenge humanity now faces in the real world.